Sardis, all right, another of those churches in modern Turkey. The one who has the seven spirits of God, I suggested those would be seven angels. And the seven stars. Well, the stars, I think, were created with the spirits, if I'm not wrong, in the early chapter. So that would be repeating the same idea, I think. Not necessarily different, because stars were said to be angels. Doesn't matter. I recognize what you're doing. You have a name that you're alive. Perhaps you call yourself Church of the Living God. A name, you're supposed to be alive but you're dead. Oh, that's an awful thing. You as a church are dead. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which are about to die. You're dead or you're moribund. You're on the point of death. I have not found what you're doing completed. So it's what we do that counts, the obedience of faith. You are, what you're doing is not adequate in the sight of my God. I love that. Jesus has a God. So I repeat, the Trinitarian idea is the greatest intellectual scam ever perpetrated as mind think on a gullible world. We're not very smart. Jesus has a God. You can't be God if you have a God. The side of my God, the God of Jesus is the one God of Israel, the Father. So remember, think about this, what you've received. Do you realize what you've got and what you've heard? what you've heard spiritually speaking, and maintain it and repent. In other words, give up being so careless about what you have. And here's what I'm going to do. If you don't wake up, I will come like a thief at the second coming, and you're going to be overtaken as the people at the time of the flood were. Jesus, you know, likens the second coming to the days of Noah. People will be doing their thing, going about their business, and they will not be prepared. That's going to be the awful fate of this church. If they don't wake up, they're going to be over, overtaken by the parousia, just as Noah and the people in Noah's time were, in the case not of Noah, of course, eight of them were alive. So you want to be like Noah and his family, awake and alert. Otherwise, you're not going to know when I'm going to come. This is a terrible warning for any who have known the truth and are doing very little with the truth. But you have a few. Now he sort of concedes, changes his tune. We've got a few of you here in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. That's a good image. And they will walk with me in white, spotless clothing because they are worthy. Yes, worthy. They deserve it. Of course, God is not operating on a language basis that we cannot understand. They are worthy. It doesn't say they've earned it exactly. They haven't done so much that God is forced to do it, but they're deserving. The one who overcomes, one who succeeds, will thus be clothed in white garments. And, oh, look at this. I will not erase his name from the book of life. But if you don't repent, I'm going to erase your name from the book of life. That is very much against the so-called once saved, always saved idea, which is just sheer nonsense. You are being saved currently. You were saved when you began the Christian walk and you will be saved in the future. It's in three tenses of the verb, salvation is. But here is a tremendous threat. If you don't repent, if you devalue, if you count as really nothing very special, your inheritance of the truth, which was fought for and acquired at great cost to the founders, if you take that carelessly, if you don't bother reading a book or two about what happened to found your denomination, for it, I will not erase his name from the book of life. If you repent, if you take seriously your heritage, if you appreciate by reading, by thinking you've got and realizing how valuable it is, I will then confess your name. I will say, look, here's the name of so-and-so. Look, Father, he did well. Let's reward him for that. And before God's angels so the angels myriad millions of them that operate with the father will also be in on this if you have an ear to hear if you're if this speaks to you now if you're one who really has not taken serious the truth of what you've been given you could go to our site and read the book by wiley jones 10 discourses on the kingdom of god brilliant material from the days uh, around 1880 or so from Virginia, Wiley Jones, J-O-N-E-S, 10 discourses. We've even provided a chapter heading list. You could read one, you know, one week, another, another week. You will get the flavor of the faith of Abraham, the Abrahamic faith, which from my angle was a tremendous return to sanity from much of the nonsense that's taught in larger denominations. That's a fair warning.